Hi, my friend. It's Pat Sloan here on a Monday. So first, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are now at 92,000 subscribers, going for 100,000. At 95,000, I will give away another quilt. And I said when I got to 92,000, I would select one. So this week, I will get into my quilts and find one, which will be the giveaway for when we hit 95,000. So be watching every day. You never know when that quilt will show up for you to see. So we had huge amount of quilts with sunshine yellow. It was beautiful in the group. It was so happy to see all of that beautiful yellow quilts. Uh, we enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed it. And people were still jumping in even through Sunday sharing their yellow quilts. So if you have not gone to the group and taken a look, be sure you go on over there. This past uh, weekend, it was Monarch Butterfly Day. Uh, so because I didn't have a video, I thought I'd still put this on for today. So if you have a quilt with butterflies, show that quilt. We're, see, we're keeping this spring light. Yes, get us through February and March <laughs> topics. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? We have uh, Scrappiness is Happiness today, and uh, we have a, just a, a deep dive into some th some sort of stuff like cleaning stuff that I'm doing so I thought you might want to be inspired to work on some of yours but before we do that there were a lot of people sharing single spools and even like a pile of spools that they've made so far the scissors and spools I can't believe it they're so cute so we have a little quilt show by you so let's take a look Alexandria starts us off by sending us onto outer space with her lovely spool with a space fabric and the plaid scissors Deb is continuing on that purple color, but look at those scissors. Don't you want real scissors in real life with that beautiful floral on them? Ah, uh, I do, I do. Denise has several, she's got several, and look at that wood grain fabric on there. These are just beautiful. Elaine, Elaine, look at her, with the thread, it looks like, look at the thread. Okay, yeah, it's fabric, but yeah, it looks exactly like thread, so cool. Jan's is gorgeous with a plaid used as the thread part of the scissors. Love the black handles. Now, Kathy has two. So here is hers. And she's got it already into a mini quilt. But look at that thread. She has got the perfect fabric. Let's look at it up close for this variegated thread color. It's perfect. I love it, Kathy. Latia has another sort of spacey theme there with a little swirls and starbursts. At least that's what I think it is. <laughs> I love the yellow scissors. They, they're just gorgeous. Do I have yellow scissors? Yeah, I do. I do several. The Ulfa ones are yellow. Lucy has another super cool thread on hers. Uh, look at that peach and green. That'd be a great variegated thread. Nancy's is beautiful. There was lots of oohs and ahs over at the site for the fabric she used for her spool. Robin's is another one that's done, done, done. Look at it. It is so darling with all that scissor and sewing machine fabric, the buttons. Super cool. Sandy's is beautiful. Ah, I love the handles. Another one. I want real scissors like that. That is Tula Pink Fabrics, the same fabrics that we're using in the Butterfly Quilt. SJ's. This is darling darling fabric, little button flowers and sewing letters for the scissor handles. Just a couple more here. Tiffany's is also like on her way to done. I thought it was done at first, but that's actually a design board it's on, but beautiful fabric for it. And she's got the date on there. She's got her little character. It's so cute. Trina's is happy, happy, happy. I may have had that thread fabric, that one with that stripe. I may have had that in polka dot handles. Yes, please. And the last one is from Wendy. This is so beautiful, soft and pretty in pink. Thank you, everybody. Aren't they darling? So you need to download the pattern. It's a paid pattern that you buy. Um, link is, it's, it's a downloadable, so it's pretty easy, designed by my friend Wendy Shepard. And even if you just do one spool, it is so darling. All right, let's go look at Scrappiness is Happiness on the other side. It is another one of the smaller blocks for Scrappiness is Happiness this week. So I just, I love this one as a full quilt. Oh my goodness. I think that would be a fun one to do as you're doing other things. I also really like it with that light, like something very light with all of these. Then you can, 
I think with this quilt, you can make it really scrappy. If you're doing sort of a white, off-white, cream, um, something like that, then you can make all these different colors for the stars. So for me, I am going to stay with the white for my block, because you know I have that blue as the background. Now, I'm not putting all the blocks up this week. I will do them next week, um, because I had other things up there I wanted to show you. So let's, uh, let's take a look. So close in, you know, it has got four fabrics for a block, and we're only doing one one block. So I decided that, did you want to read that? Think Pretty Thoughts. It's a mouse pad that I use over on my table, like to protect the table, so I like generally plunk stuff on top of it, so I don't want to scratch my surface. No, so I got that somewhere. Maybe it was Target many years ago. Okay, so <laughs> I digress. Here is my background. I decided to go with the polka dot for it. I think that would be super fun. And then remember this piece that I want to get used up? I think this is a good block for that. I'm in love with the little mushrooms. It is not what these two are not with the fabric line. Well, neither is the background. But I'm going to do the mushrooms. And then I'll pick another teal with the little bees. And then a little bit bigger print with the yellow, which also has the bees. Aren't they cute? Do you know there's a needle minder? Hold on. Hold on. Bev did a needle minder that looks, that is that bee. Look at that. <gasps> I didn't realize it came from the fabric line. It's so cute. Look how cute that is. Okay. So here is my fabrics for the block and I will sew it up. It is polka dots for the win once again. I can't tell you how much I love polka dots in a quilt. <laughs> I just love them. This would be so cute to have the whole quilt with the different, I mean, even if you did a little bit more controlled scrappy like I'm doing for the whole um, project this time with the blues and the turquoise and the yellow and little s splashes of, yes, green, tiny little bit of green in there. Oh, so good, so good. All right, so we're gonna now do a little bit of a deep dive into some cleanup. If you have a little tidy up that needs to be done, like I am just going to show you, then hopefully you will do that today. So let's take a look. So the one thing I need to get under control are my cross stitch projects because I finished one, didn't put things away, actually didn't totally finish it. And then I started looking for another one. And well, even if you don't cross stitch, you can relate because you have quilt projects that you didn't finish or some other project and you know, you, you did finish and you didn't put the things away. Anyway, so there we go. This is what we're going to address right now because I want to get this one finished, get a border on it, get a little, make it into a little quilt to display. Isn't he darling? Look at him, look at him. Now I do wanna ask you, for those of you who do a lot of cross stitch, this is 14 count and it feels like some 14 count I have, the weave might be, the holes might be tinier or close up better. Maybe that's the term, maybe they close up better. But I just felt like the dark threads didn't have as good a coverage on this particular brand of 14 count. I don't know, I'm, I'm you know, did it anyways, I'm using it. You can tell me how the 14 count weaves are. This one is a little firmer fabric. This one that's a 14 count feels like the coverage, it's also softer, feels like the coverage is a little better. Yeah, always things to learn. So let's take a look. I was originally planning that this would be a red border, red, red, everything red, but the red in here that I chose, that variegated thread is really burgundy, deep, deep burgundy. So then I was just holding it like this going, well, what if I do a little teeny pink border? And so I got my pink fabric out. Oh, here we go. So the pink fabric. Now, oh, good grief. I have a lot of things that are kind of directional and or have like bigger print. So, you know, not sure that they're the best option, but I was looking in here and I did see, like this one is light. It actually mimics the cloth a lot. And I think that one is super cute because it just gives it a little frame in that almost the same shade. See that? 
So it's almost the same shape, but so then it's almost like, well, is it even worth it? Because, you know, I will have a little border. What I'm finding is these tiny pieces, I do not want directional things because they just, um, they just play with your eyes a little bit too much. Your eyes get focused on it being a directional fabric. Okay, so I'm, I'm searching in here. I saw this, I saw a piece. Here is one that's a floral, but it's a bigger floral, and I just don't want to make this big. Here is one from, oh, I see what I was looking for. Here's one of my fabric line. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, see the floral is too big. If I was gonna make it bigger, maybe, that would be cute as maybe an inner and outer border uh, for that guy, like this. But I'm thinking, I just, I just want a little accent. I don't want, so this is, this is looking good because I won't have much of the, of the cloth that I stitched on and then have a little bit, that looks good. But here I found the other one. I was looking for something with kind of a scattery, small floral. That is what I had in my brain. And so there is one, there's that one. Okay. Which do you like? Do you like the print, the one that's more tonal or the one that has the flowers? They're not as tight of flowers. If I was going to be doing this in the red, and I probably, I probably don't even have it anymore, but I used to have a red fabric with, um, that was similar to this pink one, but all of these flowers were a little bit smaller and, and more dense. They, there wasn't so much background and they kind of covered it. They were reds and yellows. And that I'm thinking in my head that would have been perfect, but it was the wrong red. This is more burgundy. So I'm I'm gonna choose between this one and this one and finish this cross stitch. Now this is the one that I have thread that I haven't gotten back into the container uh, and put away. Be you know, it's just been there taking up space. So let me move this over here. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. When we do our block um, block a day in March. I think my block a day, I'm pretty sure I am going pink. I am going to be using these fabrics for my block a day because I have a lot of fun uh, pinks, you know, like here's, like see, chocolates and here is llamas. I'm just pulling these, look at this, look at this. So I'm thinking that I should use the pinks and then maybe navy with it. Pink and navy, like a one, so one navy that would go with everything and then use pinks as you know the, the scrappy part for the block, went, block a day in March. March we do a block a day, I think this will be our third year because I started in 2020 when the pandemic started. <laughs> and so this will be our third one, super fun. So anyway, let me just stick this over here, over on the book stand. Let me just bring the book stand forward. Okay, so for me, I'm also, let me talk to it. I'm also trying different methods for the cross stitch, like the whole process. How do I put the threads? Let me just show you. Um, you know, how, which needle do I like? When I'm working, where do I like to work? Where do I want things to be? Do they have to be out? And so, you know, I did that when I applicate. I hand applicate. I had to work through all these different kind of options and ways you can sort of make that process your own so that it works most efficiently for you and that you're encouraged and want to stitch. And so that's kind of where I am. I'm not 100% yet. Let me get another thing out here. I'm not 100% yet on where I want to be with this, but let me, let me show you what I have. So I have been experimenting and when I did the uh, 2023, when I did the little Year of the Rabbit 2023, I decided to hang my cross stitch. Let me get it just in the, hang my cross stitch on here. So I had all of the skeins. This would be kind of like a project bag, you know, like here's the project bag. I decided to try hanging it. So I put the skeins on a ring, a jump ring, and then I took and hung each piece, the, the pieces as I was using them. And so now I am a person that I am not keeping these unless I get, unless one of them's like maybe I don't have much left, like the, the burgundy um, variegated there. I might take that one and put it on there. 
So now all of these need to go back into the container. They need to all come off here and go back in the container. Now I'm starting to work back on the, where is it? Ooh. Oh, it's over here. I'm starting working back on the f flea market. And that looks like, let me just move this over. So that looks like this. And I got it out the other day. And I did, I've done, let's get, let's get in close here. So I've done a whole section. Since I last showed you, I did this whole section. I'm working on this one. Uh, and so I am working on this one side. So once I do this side, then I just have the third portion of the design. So I've got this done. I have this done. I'm working on this. But I want to do a little piece for uh, St. Patrick's. So let me first, before we go look at that, let me just show you um, what I am what I'm trying with this one because I had this little one of these little thimble containers, and I had wrapped everything on these alpha bitties. No, not alpha bitties. These are floss bitties. You know, I'd wrap them rather than t took them through the hole because they aren't hanging. And they're, wrapping them is not the best, as you can see. Like just when you're doing patchwork or applique or English paper piecing, you're going through a process to figure out what is the best. This is a needle holder and some scissors, red, red, everything red. Uh, now I was given this, Melissa made this for me, our ambassador. And so I've been trying this out with the, with the flea market flowers. And that's kind of nice as long as they don't get so messy like this grouping did there. If I keep them tidy and I got the needles in there. But then I also just got this, which is made for the other kind of floss wraps, the traditional ones. But these work fabulous. I mean, they're not as stable, but when you just have it on the table, and this is an, a magnet for your needle. And so if I am working and I want to let me get this, let's say I wanted to put this guy out here. There, I've got a magnet. But I really like this little stand uh, versus like keeping them all in here and then put, put the little stand out when I'm working with two or three of them because some of the flowers are like, they're like two, two shades. You can see like two pinks, two yellow and a peach, two shades actually of aqua. All right, so that is the kind of process that I'm looking at. Now, the other thing that happened was I wanted to get out this cross stitch that was for um, St. Patrick's that I had bought and I wanted to show you and I could not find it. I could not find it. So take a look. So I was trying to find that cross stitch. I knew I had some cross stitch stuff in here. It wasn't in there and I had, and I, I was pretty sure it wasn't in there because I thought I had it a little while ago. So I thought, well, I have my other cross stitch stuff over here. Uh, no, not that one, down in here. So I have this bag in here of cross stitch patterns. And I looked through there and it was like, hmm, <clears throat> it was not in there. And I thought that was unusual because I thought it should have been in there. Then I thought, got some clapper action going on. Uh, then I thought, well, maybe it is up here in this drawer uh, because I do have some things. I'm not gonna pull it down, but nope, it wasn't in there. So I had to start thinking, where did I have more cross stitch where oh where oh where and all of a sudden I remember I have got a basket down here so now I find figure out I have cross stitch patterns in four places this is not a good plan but when I went in here I found it this is the one I was looking for oh lucky day by Saint, uh, Brenda Gervais and uh, it's got some cute little just word ones which I might do for my little three tier Oops, maybe you'd like to see it sideways where you can actually see it. Uh, or I might do the little leprechaun because he's so darn cute for my little stand. So anyway, there it is. I will bring it up now to the top instead of leaving it down there. <laughs> so, so here it is. Oh, lucky day. <laughs> oh, lucky day. I finally did find it. I'm thinking of doing this guy. Just do the little leprechaun because he's so cute. Then I have to pick the 
fabric again to put it on. So it's not quite as easy as quilting where like all the quilting fabrics are the same. You've got different weights. In here she used a 36 count. Well, I've been using 40. So 36 count is a lot smaller um, weave, tighter weave than 14 that I've been using. And so I got out some of the counts that I have. I did get an 18 to try. So I'm thinking maybe I'll try it on 18. Or I had gotten, I did get a 25 count. So I'm thinking maybe I could try it on the 25 count because I need to build up learning how to stitch on the tighter weaves so that I can do this Halloween one that I got. And it's a skill building. Just like when you're quilting and you're skill building, I want to do this Halloween one, which I need to do so because it's bigger. I need to do it on this tighter weave. Otherwise, it's a huge you know, huge finished item. I don't want a huge finished item. Uh, so look at that. So that is on, I forget what count is in here, tighter still, but I could go a little bit bigger maybe. Okay, so I've been looking through all this. So I need to get it all organized. Plus in the sew sampler, I got the readers, which I've never had. So for those of you that have used readers a lot, like I wear bifocals and I wear my glasses 24 <laughs> seven. I do take them off to sleep, but you know, they don't come off until the moment I go to sleep and they go on my face like the moment I get up. And so I'm not used to changing glasses. I don't switch glasses, but I am going to try the readers for that close up. What do you think about the teal? for these aqua rather for um, glasses. I'm thinking I should get a pair of aqua glasses next. <gasps> They're kind of fun. <laughs> All right, these are 2.5 uh, because I have no clue. Greg said, my husband Greg said that these are pretty uh, strong magnifier 2.5. He uses readers um, a lot for small work that he does, uh, electronics work and things. Let's go wrap up on the other side. <laughs> This is what I went with. I, I think it looks good. I really like it. I, just a little bit more um, of a frame that reads tonal so that it doesn't take away from the cross stitch. And I will do a little bit of quilting on it and then hand stitch the binding down. And I think I will hang it on the wall in here on the other side where I've got um, the strawberry, which will be a spool then. And I have the little magnet holders. I think I'll put way up on top there. So it'll give me good luck through the year. All right, my friend, and remember, we have $30 off the yellow Aliso iron. So if you are wanting one of these and look at the carrying cases, so you wanna pick one of those up at the same time because then it goes in with the shipping and everything. <gasps> Sunshine yellow. <laughs> I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.